not a question of whether things are seeming heavy to you or tough to you, light to you. The question is, who is finding heaviness and in what? Neither is lightness wonderful or auspicious on its own, nor is heaviness. Obviously, if you are conditioned to live in a particular way, and if that way is challenged by you or by any other force or person, you will find it heavy. Hmm? Now is such heaviness to be repudiated just because the experience is of heaviness? A drug addict might experience a lot of heaviness when he is on the path of de-addiction. Just because he is experiencing heaviness when he wants to break free of his habit, should he give up on his attempt? Hmm? And conversely, the same fellow feels quite light when he gets another dose of his favorite substance. Is such lightness of any worth? The very words tapasya and sadhana carry the sound of heaviness, don't they? You cannot just choose the path that is easy for the deluded mind. Obviously, easy is right. But for whom? Who must find the ease? Whose ease is appreciable? The ease that comes with simplicity. The unfortunate part with being human is that you can start finding complexities, convolutions and distort distortions quite easy. All you need to do is get accustomed. So ease is not a value on its own. Nor is difficulty or heaviness a value on its own. What is valuable is being right. Are you right? If you are moving towards the right and you experience heaviness, keep moving. And if you are wrongly settled and now there is ease in the settlement, you better reject the ease, you better choose difficulties. Are you getting it? Hmm? Always ask, who is finding something easy? Who is choosing? Who is rejecting? If the rejection is coming from someone who himself is worthy of being rejected, would you reject what he wants to reject or would you reject the selector himself? Often, 
instead of abiding by the selection, you need to very closely scrutinize the selector. People come and ask, how do we know whether a choice is good or bad? Question is for whom? You are not one, you are many. You are at least two. Each of your choices is good for one of you and not at all favorable for the other one. First of all, you decide. Which self are you aligned with? Which self do you want to promote? What is it that you really, heartfully want to be? Once you have answered that question, then the question of right choice gets automatically settled. We keep talking of benefits and losses without first asking who is worthy of being benefited? Who must suffer a loss? 